yes, this is a backyard roller coaster. And yes, that was an accelerated launch. Hi, my name is Sean, and today I'm going to present to you how we put a mid-ride launch on a backyard roller coaster. Strap in, folks. Because this here is the wildest ride in the wilderness. All right, so before we even began designing this ride, we knew that we wanted to put a launch on the ride, but we weren't sure what system to use. You know, a lot of rides use electromagnets, some use air, others use sophisticated pulley systems. We realized, both for affordability and ease of assembly, that going with a pneumatic option would be the best thing for us to do. And so for this reason, we looked at what was out there and we started off our research with Will from London. And if you haven't checked out his backyard coaster, definitely do. I'm gonna put a link to his video up above. Our system is composed of two essential systems our energy storage system and our energy release system. So the first thing we had to do is capture the air. So this is our air inlet right here. This goes to the air compressor. This is the sensor that tells the PLC that our air compressor is functional and is sending air through. This is the valve or the pipe assembly that sends air to all the brakes and sensors. This is the solenoid that lets air into the launch tank. Uh, this is just a pressure gauge to tell us what's going on in the PLC is actually what's going on in the tank in reality. This is the sensor that tells the PLC that it, the launch tank has enough pressure to launch. And obviously this is our launch tank right here. And then this solenoid is for when we retract the piston to release the residual air left in the piston. Our system always needs to be pressurized because our brakes rely on air. And so one of the gauges is just monitoring, hey, is there air in the system? That can shut down the entire system. It's communicating with the PLC constantly. And if at any time the compressor stopped working or there was a hole in the system, we lost pressure, the whole system would shut down. The second gauge is hooked up to the tank and it tells the PLC when the tank has reached the pre-programmed pressure that we know will launch the cart far enough. Once the pressure has reached that PSI, the gauge will tell the PLC, all right, close the valve, stop filling the tank with pressure. This then sends a signal to the ride operator that, hey, it is okay to dispatch. That brings us into the second half of our system, which is the energy release system. A really big part of this is communication. Once the cart is going down the track and it reaches the launch bay, it passes over the launch rod, which has a spring-loaded mechanism, and then hits a emergency brake stop, essentially sandwiching the cart in between the launch rod and the e-stop, making sure that it marries perfectly with the rod. In that location, the wheel assembly hits a sensor, which tells the PLC Hey, I'm here, I'm ready to go. As soon as that happens, a countdown initiates in the PLC. We'll say 30 seconds. At 30 seconds, the launch sequence will be initiated. There is a way that the rider can jumpstart this by interacting with the room. For this scenario, we're just gonna say that we're gonna let the timer run down. Once the timer runs down to zero, the launch doors open. Those launch doors hit a toggle switch, which tell the PLC the doors are open. It's now safe to send the launch cart through. Once that happens, the PLC then sends a signal back to the emergency brake and says, you can lower. The emergency brake lowers, hitting another sensor, completing the circuit, and telling the PLC everything is in order, launch the coaster, which then sends a signal back to the one inch valve, which is right outside our air cannon, opening it up and flooding air into the system. So our air cannon, our system is composed of two primary parts. One is a six inch PVC pipe, which is approximately 20 feet in length. And then our steel rod, which on one end has a gasket and ball bearings, which allow it to glide inside the pipe very smoothly and then the cart side, which is essentially a wheel assembly attached to an internal track underneath the cart. This rod pushes the cart about 20 feet until it hits a buffer, which we created using uh, sandwiched wood and rubber gaskets. Michael, what are you working on? Why do you keep asking me these questions? <laughs> We're gonna have a thing to stop the piston from destroying everything. <laughs> which it probably could do. All of that is attached to a large concrete block, 
So it, bends, it basically just hits that block and stops. But the cart continues forward. Once the cart clears the hill and is making its way back to the station, it trips another sensor, which tells the PLC, hey, I've cleared the hill. It's okay to reset the system. At that point, the launch door is closed. The emergency brake goes back up and a vacuum pump turns on in a perfect world, which would pull back the rod. Now, full disclosure, our system didn't work well enough to pull back the rod. So when we were sending riders through, we would just manually push it. So we timed our launch at about 26 miles per hour in about 1.1, 1.2 seconds. Um, the G's that we got were around 1.3, 1.4. Uh, we're really proud of the launch. It worked perfectly. It worked consistently. We look forward to any comments you have, and thanks for following us. Take care. Michael, how does your sandwich work? I usually put bologna on top of salami, on top of turkey, on top of ham, on top of roast beef. And you get some pickles. You put the pickles on. <laughs> These are the pickles. It's mostly pickles. Ooh, that looks like a delicious sandwich. Yeah. I don't think I'll be able to eat it though. It's too big.